My name is Ron Dorn, and I'm the instructor of GCU 113. The purpose of this presentation is to prevent, present an overview of the GCU 113 class. I'm a desert geomorphologist and a geographer, and I'm also the coordinator of the course, only doing a few of the presentations for you. So I'm the person you go to with questions and any issues related to the class. Behind you is Phoenix, and this is a place called South Mountain that I love very much. I'm going to share the screen and go over the basic presentation with you. So the GCU 113 class is in a seven and a half week format. So if you're used to a normal 15 week semester course, this is a big heads up. You need to focus on getting the class finished in the just seven and a half weeks. If you're used to the session A, session B formatted ASU, then great, you're all set and ready to go. Another upfront aspect of the class to tell you about is that this course was designed for education majors. You are very welcome to take the class because the material is not about teaching. It's about the material that aspiring elementary teachers will be teaching about government, history, geography, and economics. The requirements at ASU that this course meets is both historical awareness, focusing on US history, and the option of also covering some Arizona history, if that be a way, if that interests you or you're gonna be teaching Arizona history. The social and behavioral parts of the class are met by the geography and economic presentations. And then a third thing that this class meets for aspiring teachers is it meets the constitution's requirement of both the United States and Arizona on civics for teacher certification. If you're interested in the specific learner objectives, please pause the presentation and go ahead and read them on the screen. I'm the organizer of the class. I'll be presenting a few of the presentations, but most of the presentations will be by PhDs in the sp their specific fields. Jeff Bass for US history, Heidi Osula for Arizona history, Brian Dilley for civics or political science, and Beth Larson for geography. Brian Dilley is also an expert, expert in economics, and he'll be presenting the economics lectures. This course was developed by a federal grant called the Teaching Foundations Project, and it was developed to address the problem that aspiring teachers were taking history of the Beatles and other courses that were not related to the material that they were going to be teaching. And so this was to take the, some of the best teachers in the material and make it come alive. The grading of the course is something that you may not have encountered before. It's a course grading called point accrual, in which your grade is based upon the accumulation of points. So here before you is what you'll see when you look at the syllabus. And I have a percentage scale there to make a point that if you reach 160 points, that's sort of like getting 100% or more. But when you look at Canvas and you look at the percent that you scored, it's okay to miss questions, just learn from it, because your grade is only based upon the points you earn. The idea is to avoid punishing students for messing up at front. Everybody has different styles of assessment. And the material sometimes takes getting used to taking the quizzes and understanding how the questions are asked. And it's silly to punish students for that learning curve. Also, I want to remove the fear of the grade. I want the grade to be in your hands. And the best way for you to have control of your grade is for you to decide what grades you want, and then you earn the number of points to reach that threshold. So even though you'll be seeing things in Canvas like percentage and out of please don't bother emailing me. My answer is going to be the same. Ignore that information. Your grade is based only on the points. So there's a twist here. Because there are different requirements for the class, constitutions, historical awareness, and social behavioral sciences, you have to earn at least 35 points in each of these categories to reach a C. So when you reach 105 points, that's 35 in each category, you've got your C. And then you choose the areas that interest you the most 
For example, if you're going to be a third grade teacher in Arizona, you may want to focus on Arizona. If you're going to be a fifth grade teacher in Arizona, you may want to focus on the United States. Or you can just take a broad brush and learn a lot. Believe it or not, there are many students that earn over 200 points or 220 points. They just relax, they get into the flow, and they want to get their money's worth and learn as much as they can. So again, accumulating knowledge is best shown by the points earned. The point system ensures that the various requirements are met. 35 points for constitutions, historical awareness, and social behavioral sciences. And that the idea is to facilitate your joy and exploration of the subfields and to learn best. The problem with this system is that I cannot have due dates for specific assignments. Forcing somebody to go lock, stock, and barrel through a set of due dates it doesn't work with the system. You need to have the flexibility. So what I suggest is a point accumulation guide. You take the number of weeks you have left, find out the number of points you need to earn and divide the points by the number of weeks. And that's your pacing guide for getting through the class or the grade you want. So the suggested pacing guide is that you go through the constitutions and earn at least 35 points in weeks one and two. Then you go through the history section and you earn the 35 points in weeks three and four. Then you go through geography and economics and you're in the 35 points. And then you take your time with the rest of the class to earn the points for the grade that you want. There's nothing to buy. All of the reading materials are hyperlinks and PDF files, but there are please some must remembers. This course ends on midnight, the last day of the session. It's specified at the top of the syllabus in big, bold letters. I will not give you more time. When the session is over on that date, if you haven't reached the grades you want, I download the grades and that's it. So fair warning, I have no tolerance for people who go over that deadline. The reason is there are so many students in this class, I can't give you more time. I can't individualize the due dates. I need to process the grades. I need to do quality assurance checks. And that takes a lot of time with so many students. So be aware, I have no tolerance for people going past the deadline. And again, here is a screenshot of the syllabus giving you the grading scale. The idea is that you accumulate more points, your grade goes up and up and up. So when you start on Canvas, I'm the sort of person to use modules. So focus on the modules. And in particular, in the modules, there's the orange arrow link to all lectures and readings and many transcripts. That's the link that gives you the links to all the lectures. The lectures are in different formats. Some of them are closed captioned some of them are Adobe Presenter, some of them are transcripts, and usually you have all three options for each one of the presentations. The discussion board, I encourage you to use them for shared questions. Uh, let other people benefit by you asking the questions, but if you have a specific question about your grade, you must email me directly, and you can only email me from your ASU email account. If you send a Gmail, a Yahoo, a Hotmail, or something else, I can't give you grading information. It's not secure. The ASU General Counsel's Office says only answer grade questions if the student asks you from their email. So here's what the Constitution's portions of the class looks like. It's a big table and there's the different lectures on the left. There's the main link to an Adobe presenter format, which is one where you have control over slide by slide. There are some closed caption lectures available. There is as many transcripts as we could afford to make. And then there are the readings to enrich the class. However, the questions on the quiz come only from the lectures. The readings are to provide the same material in case you're a reader by nature. This is what the constitutions look like. You watch the lecture after looking at the link of all the readings and, and transcripts available. And then you come here and you take the quiz. You only get one shot at taking the quiz. They are not repeated. Remember that 
if you do not answer the question correctly, your grade doesn't suffer. Only accumulated points matter. The consequence of not learning the material is that you don't know it. So hopefully you'll learn from your mistake and that you'll do better the next time. And if you need more points, you'll have to take another assessment and learn more. This is what questions look like on the US constitutions. I've kind of stacked the material here. US history and Arizona history all go into the same history bundle. Most students just focus on US history because that's, that's what is of greatest interest, but there will be many aspiring elementary teachers that are interested in third grade and they'll wanna focus on the Arizona lectures. This is what the, it looks like in Canvas. There's a warning here that the US history lectures are very long. Historians like to talk and talk and talk and professors like to talk and talk and talk in general. So there are transcripts and the quizzes tend to break up the history lectures into a part one and part two. This is what a history question looks like. It's multiple choice. Then when you get to the economics part of the class, economics is something that is important in everyday life. And also teachers who take a basic knowledge test to get certified, the number one subject matter that tends to mess them up if you're wanting to be a general KA teacher is economics. And so these lectures were specifically designed to provide you very basic background knowledge about economics so you can then be very proficient in teaching your own students and also passing the general subject knowledge test. All of these economics lectures are combined into a 10 point cumulative quiz. Geography is a very broad field. Geography is to space like history is to time. Geographers think about things very differently. We're high spatially focused people. And so the best way to communicate the field of geography is by the different national standards that K-8 teachers will teach. In Arizona, these 18 standards are bundled into six packages. But no matter where you are in the world, these are the focus of what geography gets taught in the K-12 classroom. And it also gives you a broad perspective on the field of geography. It's not what you thought when you took geography in the K-12 world. It's very different, much more sophisticated. So I'll go over the grading again to remind you. It's all multiple choice. You have to get 35 points in each of the areas, but then the grade is under your control. And please, I have a favor to ask. Don't email me two things. First, don't ask me to confirm your grade. Think about it. There are hundreds of students taking this class. If I were to confirm hundreds of grades, it takes me five minutes to look it up, do the math, multiply 400 students times five minutes. Would you want to do that for your life? So trust me, when you reach 160 points, that's an A+. Plus. Trust me, the percent that you see in Canvas doesn't count. I show the percentage information here just because it helps you kind of understand what the point scale is all about. Again, I want to encourage you to watch as many presentations as you can. Feel free to go over the 160 points. But if you reach 160 and you want to stop, that's great. The answer to your question is your grade will not go down if you do not do an assignment. The choice is up to you. I hope you enjoy the class and I look forward to communicating with you throughout the session and give you a chance to explore some of the implications of this field in email exchanges with me. Enjoy, stay safe.